Hey guys, I'm Nick. Earlier this year, we made a video called Practicing Conservation Starts with Education. And that video, I mentioned some things about one of the reasons I think conservation isn't working is because the majority of anglers aren't educated on the species of fish they are catching. They're just catching them, looking at some numbers that says, hey, I can keep this, and they're killing it. Uh, that goes with black drum, redfish, trout, flounder, uh, every, pretty much every species of fish you target, sheep's head, doesn't matter, inshore, offshore, all these things. Uh, one of the things I mentioned in that video was starting a series about educating anglers and fishermen and people new to the sport, or maybe people who've been doing it for years, about each fish. Every fish has a ton of differences. They spawn differently. They breed they grow faster, they grow slower, they can't reproduce till certain ages. And understanding all of those things are going to help you become better anglers. One, help you catch more fish, and it'll help you, you know, conserve or be some kind of some kind of effort in a conservation that you may not have done before because you don't know things about them. Um we're going to touch on a number of species, and today we're going to do redfish. We're going to cover redfish. I'm going to give you a bunch of facts about redfish. Some of them are going to educate you. Some of them are just random things that you're going to have some knowledge and stuff. You can find a lot of these on Google. You'll learn a lot of these if you read research reports. I've read multiple reports, uh, one done in South Carolina, one done in Mississippi over the years about length and when they become mature. That stuff is super educational, and it goes a long ways to helping you become better angler so i obviously i know a ton of them i added a bunch of them on here to my phone uh here's one the first one the world record is 94 pounds now i've done that for a long time it was caught in 1984 in hatteras north carolina i've read an article about it a long time ago uh gentleman was surf fishing uh yeah that's a monster okay 94 pound redfish uh, that's a monster, okay? Uh, the fly fishing record is actually 43 pounds. It actually was caught in Florida's Banana River Lagoon uh, in 1995. So a lot of these records are old, you know, they a long time ago, all right? Um, and maybe this is part of the reason. You know, back in the 1980s, uh, there was a chef, and he made blackened redfish famous, okay? And that one recipe, you know, hitting the news and being in newspapers and magazines decimated the redfish population all throughout the, all throughout, you know, Florida, Texas, all over the place. And one of the reasons was it was just tasty, okay? But really, blackened anything is tasty. So obviously, times have changed. But, um, there's actually a bunch of history about this in Destin, too. If you do some reading, you'll see where. They were netting entire schools of bull reds. Like nowadays, people go out and you throw spros and stuff and jigs into huge schools of breadfish. And you catch and release them because they're too big. They're all bulls. In the 80s, they were going out into the Destin Pass area and just netting them in huge seine nets and just catching and killing and selling them all. And that was killing the entire breeding stock because we'll talk about it here in a minute. But female redfish don't reproduce until they're over 36 inches long. That's 8 to 11 years old. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, in 2007, George W. Bush actually passed a law making it illegal to harvest redfish in federal waters. It is illegal in most state waters now, too, with the exception of Mississippi. I believe you can still do it there, but it's very, very, very small, and it's not anything crazy. It's well-regulated nowadays. Um in the first year of their life, redfish can grow up to 14 inches. Now, there are some other studies that show they average 6 inches per year for the first 4 years of their life. And then once they get to 24 inches, they stop growing in length so much, they start to get shoulders. You know, a lot of times we'll catch these fish and on these charters, like, well, that's 22-inch fish. People are like, how do you know that? Well, it's still skinny. You can grab it by the back of the head. It doesn't have much shoulders. Once they get to 24, 25 inches... They start to broaden up. They're stronger. They fight harder. Uh, this is a different fish, okay? Um, and that's why the growth rate and length slows down so much as they get longer, all right? Now, um, red drum begins spawning in the fall. Uh, obviously, the daylight hours will decrease and the water temperature will cool off. They'll start spawning. That's one of the reasons they get bunched up in these huge balls of fish out in the bays this time of year. Uh, 
we mentioned a few minutes ago that they're unable to spawn until they're 36 inches long. That's a female. That's 8 to 11 years old. Now, males become sexually mature at 28 inches. There's a few studies in there about this stuff. It varies a few inches in each state. Um, if you look at some historical numbers on sizes, Florida doesn't actually have the largest size redfish. Um, uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas are going to win those categories over weight, length, and girth, all those things. Uh, it's interesting to see. Probably something to do with the forage. Redfish aren't huge movers. They're not going to migrate large distances. I know a lot of people are like, oh, they're in the bay. They're in the sound. We saw a school offshore. But they're still not going hundreds of miles to migrate. They spread out throughout the bay systems. They hang out by the bridges through warmer months. They get bunched up you know, when they're spawning. And they spread back out. Uh, throughout the winter they go back to the bridges some hit the flats they move around but they don't swim very long distances maybe the delta areas over to the sorry the west of us maybe that's one of the reasons they're fatter they have more room to run around whereas we have large bay systems they have more of an estuary type deal with more bait fish and that could change it uh once these redfish are over 28 inches long their diet starts to change from crustaceans to fin fish being you know pinfish mullet menhaden depending on where they're located a ton of different fin fish okay um that's why a lot of times the small fish will miss your top water, right? They're not quite ready. Their mouths aren't big enough. If you've caught a small redfish, you know his mouth is tiny, and as they get bigger, their mouths get substantially larger. Uh, the life span of a redfish can exceed 40 years. That's a long, long time, especially when a fish doesn't become mature for we'll say 10 years, that gives her 30 years to reproduce. In the 80s, when they were netting the entire school of bull reds, they were killing the entire breeding stock of fish. That decimated the juveniles. Now, there are a lot of guys who have started fishing here recently in the last year or so, or the last four years, and uh, here in Northwest Florida, a ton of people are like, we can keep two redfish. Well, that didn't even start until 2014. It's really been a strong conservation effort on redfish and really is a prime example of how we should treat a number of species to include trout and flounder going forward which will probably happen in the next few years um once you decimate the breeding stock it takes a long time to produce juveniles by the small amount of breeding stock okay so there's a reason you can't keep bull reds i hear a lot of guys complain that they're going to keep one slot redfish well it takes 10 years to get a female to be able to reproduce that's a long long time okay keep that stuff in mind when you're mishandling these big fish or you're complaining about the laws the laws are there to protect you from yourself and if you can't you know follow those the same thing that happened in the 80s will happen again in the near future uh, let's see here. What else? Redfish are commonly referred to as red drum, spot tail, red bass, and channel bass, depending on where you are in the United States. Oh, man, there's tons and tons of information about these fish. Uh, okay, this is a good one. The full range of redfish stretches from Massachusetts all the way down to Key West, around the rim of the Gulf of Mexico, and all the way to the Mexican city, Tuxpan. Uh, now, they don't exist in targetable numbers above or north of the Chesapeake Bay, and they don't exist in targetable numbers to like Key West there. They're just not there in great numbers. They are found there, but you're not going to go out and target trophy redfish in those areas. Uh, you can target trophy redfish throughout North Carolina. The Outer Banks is well known for it. Obviously, the world record was caught there. Um, then come across to the west coast of Florida, the entire Big Bend uh, the Panhandle going into Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas are awesome, and they're all well known for their redfish fisheries. Uh, with the, really Venice, Louisiana being the redfish capital of the world. Now we covered a ton of information in there. Some of the other things that we didn't cover are more fact based to certain areas. We live in an area with uh, Three Mile Bridge. Three Mile Bridge is a prime example of a deep body of water that holds bait it has light it has lots of current and it's a wonderful place for large redfish to live throughout the warmer months and the colder months uh, one reason is that deep water lets them go to an area that 
it, the water temperature is more acclimated. It's not going to boil. It's not going to freeze. It's just right there in the middle. They can be comfortable in the harshest parts of the year. Um, during the cooler months or the transition months, say fall and spring, those bull reds will branch out. They'll go away from the bridge. You'll find them in the sound. You'll find them on the flats. You'll find them in the upper bay systems, the river mouse, all over the place. So when you're targeting redfish, it's really about just covering water till you find them. They are everywhere and they're willing to eat just about everything you put in front of their faces. The slot reds are different, however, in the juvenile fish. They don't want to leave what we refer to as the estuary, which could be any of your smaller bay systems, the river mouths, uh, the Santa Rosa Sound. And they do that for a number of reasons. One, they feed primary on crustaceans, small shrimp, small crabs, things of that nature. They're not going to find that stuff in great numbers or easily accessible at Three Mile Bridge. And they're also going to be targets to dolphins, sharks, and whatever else is swimming around down there that's hungry. So when you're targeting these slot reds throughout the year, in the summertime, think you want to find cool temperatures. In the wintertime, you want to find warm water. Uh, a lot of times in the wintertime, shallow, muddy flats is a great answer. Uh, fishing the north side of the sound in the wintertime is a great answer, but don't do it until noon when the sun's been up to heat up that water a little bit. And that's really a lot. That's a really a lot of it. OK, if you guys have questions about this stuff or have additional information, put it in the comments section. We'll start a conversation about it and we'll talk about it. This stuff is designed to help people. The biggest part about conservation here is redfish is a primary, you know, a prime example of how. In the 80s, they were almost gone. Uh, and that's nuts to think about for a lot of people. And even myself, it's mind-blowing because the, really the species is, wow, they, they rebound incredibly. They pr reproduce well. They're hardy fish. They don't die a lot of times. Even if they're mishandled, they're, they're really hardy. Um, so I don't want to see it get back to that. I don't think redfish will ever get back to those numbers. However, Trout and flounder, even black drum, are diminishing very quickly. And we're going to talk about those species here in coming videos of this, you know, this series. But I think it's going to come down to a point in time where we have to stop harvesting big flounder, big black drum, and big speckled trout and allow those big fish to breed. You know, let the breeding stock do the same thing redfish has done in the past and get us back to quality numbers or the fishery is going to suffer forever and future generations won't be able to enjoy the things we enjoy today. I appreciate you guys watching. I look forward to seeing your comments. Really start a conversation below. It's nice to see your guys' input and feedback. I hope this video helps some of you learn more things about redfish. I enjoyed making it. And as always, I look forward to you booking your next adventure.